Welcome back. Today I'm going to be making the materials for a wood accent wall. I'm going to take quarter inch Luon underlayment, which has been cut down to uh, four by four pieces, thanks to Home Depot. And then I'm going to rip those down into five and three quarter inch wide planks and then set them in a herringbone pattern after I stain them and distress the edges a little bit. So here we go for step one, which is cutting the planks. So here we are, we ripped down the 4x4 sheets, quarter inch Luon, into uh, 5 and 3 quarters by 2 foot pieces. So like I said, we're going to be laying these in a herringbone pattern, but before that, before we do that, uh, I'm going to distress them and stain them, and then I'm going to rough the edges to give it a more distressed look and then also when since they're going to be staying the same color when they meet up together you'll be able to tell the difference between the planks we won't have to worry about filling nail holes we'll just put a, a dab of glue behind it to keep them in place put some brads up there and they'll be perfectly fine they'll stay up there just fine but if if the homeowner would change their mind they're easy to take down obviously there's going to be some drywall repair from the brads and a, a little bit of glue, but um, not that bad. So it's, it's something that you can take down later um, and repaint. So like I said, it's just quarter inch Luon. It goes for about $13 a sheet at Home Depot. It comes in four by eight sheets. I had them cut it down into four by four squares just so it's easier to get on the table saw and get a cleaner cut and rip them down into the five and three quarters um, to get the most um, out of it so right here I got about I got 48 uh, strips here so it's gonna come in between 90 to 100 square feet uh, it's gonna be close some you have high baseboards in the house so a lot of that's gonna take up some of the space but if I have to go get some more and rip it down it's not that big of a deal I got another job uh, with the same material coming up where we're gonna lay in, in a horizontal um, fashion just like shiplap now one thing i did want to point out too is that in the past i've i've chamfered the edges so it gives it more of that shiplap feel but this stuff doesn't like to be uh routed or i put it on the table saw and done a chamfer on it too and it just uh, doesn't react well to that and you could still do it but it's not really necessary that's why i say i'm going to rough it up with the orbital sander around the edges and it'll give it that great illusion of it's of it being um, kind of thicker, but in this, when it's, once it's on the wall, you can't tell if it's a quarter inch or an inch thick. So, um, stay tuned and watch. All right, so here's the process. We got three down already. Just check to see how the stain's working on it. What you'll notice when you go to do this project is there's a good side and a bad side to this board. It's cheap board, and some of them. You can see there it's got some orangish color to it so i think there is a better side to it and depending on whether or not you want more knots to show so occasionally i'll do this side and then flip back to what i call the good side i like that knot right there so i think i'm going to leave it on this side this is not fine craftsmanship by any stretch of the imagination we're laying these things down we're slapping the stain on i'm using a paper towel to wipe the, the stain off because it just doesn't matter and before i've even stacked them up as soon as I'm done staining it before they're even dry. It just doesn't matter um, in this process because we're going to be distressing it. All we're looking for is to get some stain on there, get some variation. Once the stain gets on, even on this cheap wood, it starts to bring out a good um, grain fiber. And then when we go to sand the edges, it's really, it really comes alive. So I'll let you watch uh, do 
a few um, board stains, and then uh, I won't bore you with the rest of it. We'll move on to the next step. I'm leaving some spaces open here because I kind of like the variations in the wood. So that when we put them together, you can really see that they're different planks. And it may end up dry brushing a little um, different color on, over top of them. Like some of the colors that are in the, the room, grays and whites. Just see how they look once the stain is dry. See if we need some more contrast in between the boards. But you can see here, I'm not being delicate at all. And if you come up, if you decide you want more stain, you just put it on. Now, taking it off is a different story, but in this case, we're taking it off with a sander. So, you can see how it looks there. And just start wiping, wiping off. And normally, if you're staining something, nice you wouldn't use a paper towel on it because it will leave lint. This is uh, not even a consideration when doing this finish. So there's that there's that board that had the, the knot in it which I think is, is pretty cool and it's gonna it's gonna pop out more once this dries so there it is. So here's the 48 planks, all stained uh, with a Jacobian stain. Um, they are still wet. I'm going to give them just a few minutes and then see if I can get away with uh, starting to sand them and distress the edges. So here's a sample one. You can see I just I'm using 220 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander, just going around the edges. I've actually gone through a little bit in the middle. You can see um, it's a little bit of check. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, gives you that distressed look. Sometimes uh, you might get carried away and do a little bit more than you want. All you got to do is just add some more stain. So there's a uh, sample one. So uh, I'm 45 minutes into this with cutting staining all these pieces and now I'm going to start sanding and it's going to go really quick too. So, Sanding disc, but I'm not worried about that at all because 
it gets me closer to the finish line. So I'm going to probably do a layout of what it's going to look like on the wall, on the floor here slowly, and uh, get some kind of idea of what the variations look like. All right, so a little bit further here, you can see just kind of playing around with the design as to what it could be. Custom miter box. So I don't have to run up and down the stairs in order to trim pieces. It's going to save a ton of time and energy. So we're going to start filling in some of the small pieces.
right, so once you've established the angle, which in this case is 45 degrees, uh, you can pretty much make your multiple cuts. Um, I went ahead and went down to the power miter saw and made the 45s, and I got my uh, manual miter box up here for the straight cuts. So once you get the 45s, you get a good clean cut on that. Doing the straight cuts is easy. Um, and also, I was trying to get a, I'm trying to get away with not putting a piece of trim over here. If you, you know, if you make bad cuts, all you got to do is just make some, either buy or make some small trim uh, to cover the, the surrounding area, which I think would look fine. I was just trying to avoid that just to see how it would turn out. Um, plus, when I cut all these down, I had about a one-inch strip left over that I went ahead and stained the same color. So. If I do decide to cover the edges, um, I can do that and use that and it won't cost any more money to do. Um, plus it's close to the crust up too, so I'm not too worried about it. It's just huge gaps. So, stand back and look at it so far. So here's the finished product took uh, quite a bit longer than I thought it would and actually used up more material. So I had to go run and get more material, uh, rip it down, stain it, and distress it, uh, which doesn't take too long, but did pull me away from the site for a little while. So my words of wisdom for this, uh, if you're doing this herringbone pattern, is um, estimate way more uh, product because you may be able to use it for something else if you have some more left over and um, way more time just because it's more of an intricate pat pattern than doing just horizontals or verticals. So um, tried not to do a lot of uh, cutting with power tools inside the house so it wouldn't kick up dust. So I did a lot of hand sawing, which takes some time and it kind of gets a little frustrating. But overall, I think the, it turned out pretty well. So um, I'll step out of the frame here in a minute and show you the result.